Hello and welcome in this talk on teacher as an innovator. When you teach in your class, when you enter in your class, you face certain challenges which you have not visualized before. How to tackle with those challenges, how to tackle with those situations, you need to find some ways, some alternative ways, some innovative ways to deal with the situations, to deal with the problems, to deal with the requirements of the students in your class. And in that way, basically you innovate, you think innovatively and you help your learners to facilitate and you help your learners by facilitating them in their learning. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education, IGNU and today I am going to talk about a topic, teacher as an innovator. Can you see what is there in my slide? You know a rural teacher in a primary school in Sajapur district of Uttar Pradesh has used ICT innovatively to explain the functions of body organs. He used an old projector to project the organs picture on the actual body of a student to locate its place to explain its functions and to help learners in understanding how any function or any system of the body works. This is again a very good story of an innovative teacher of Uttar Pradesh, Saurav. He started innovatively a concept of a school bank. You know what a school bank is? School bank is a kind of bank which is being maintained by the students of the school, of the primary school and there is no money in this bank. What this bank has? This bank has pencil, erasers, sharpeners, scales, some color boxes, some colored sheets, means the things which a student need when they are in the class. So if one student forgot to bring it, on a particular day, he or she borrow it from the school bank and then in the evening he or she returned it and this school bank is being managed by the student themselves. So what innovation in it? Teaching learning is not about only subject teaching learning. We develop values, we develop a certain habits, we develop life skills. So such innovations are being appreciated across the country. And Saurabh has uh, gained a lot of prizes, certificates and appreciation for his innovation. Similarly, a student in a Bareilly district, a teacher in a Bareilly district used Platagon to develop videos, self-made cartoon videos to help learners. And what in this video is that a teacher is asking to recite the table to a student and a student is reciting it. So the uh, sometimes you know in mathematics class people say that recitation of the tables or memorization of the table is very boring tasks. So he brought this innovation to convert that boring task into an engaging and interactive way. Similarly, one uh, teacher has utilized hanging books means she put the letters numbers, letters in Hindi and English on different cards and these cards are hanging across the classroom, across the gallery of the school and whenever the students, the small kids, they are entering in the school, they are watching it every day and they are memorizing it and they start recognizing the numbers, the letters, the words, associated terms. So, you know, these are few examples. So, innovation is not something which is always very fancy or it comes only from the bigger institutions, any teacher can be an innovator. Any teacher can be an innovator. If we see from where this innovation term has derived, actually this innovation term has derived from a Latin word novus, which means new, novice, novelty or renovation. Even the dictionary of education has defined innovation as the promotion of new ideas or practice. It means that innovation starts with a new idea 
and that idea can come in anyone's mind. It's not only that any senior person can only innovate, only they can think, or in an industry, in a school, only the senior teachers can think, or only the bigger institution can innovate. No, anyone can innovate because anyone can have an innovative idea. Only the thing is that we need to promote such innovative ideas. We need to work on some innovative ideas. So if we are teachers, we are dealing with our learners. We are watching that what kind of problems our learners are facing every day. So we need to think innovatively to resolve those problems. Here are two definitions of innovation. One definition was given by uh, Nick Skelcon. What he said? He said, turning an idea into a solution that adds value from a customer's perspective is innovation. Another definition was given by Paul Sloan, who is saying that creativity is thinking of something new. And innovation is implementation of something new. So sometimes we get confused between creativity and innovation. So Paul Sloan's definition basically clarified these two terms that what creativity is, that you are thinking something new. But not only thinking, you convert that idea into a solution and implement. Put both the definitions uh, together, Nick's definitions and Paul's definition. What Nick Paul is saying that innovation is implementation of something new and what Nick is saying turning an idea into a solution that adds value. So if you have an idea that is not innovation. Anyone can have idea. But are we translating that idea into practice? How we are translating that idea into practice? That is basically innovation. So if we talk about teacher as an innovator, what a teacher can do being an innovator. A teacher should have freedom to innovate. The first requirement for any teacher is that if teacher is not free, if teacher is not allowed to think innovatively, if a teacher is not allowed to do experimentation and innovations within the classroom or within the school, then it will be very difficult to nurture any teacher as an innovator. To nurture any teacher as an innovator, we should have freedom to innovate. Second, a teacher should devise appropriate methods to communicate. Communicate with whom? Communicate with stakeholders. When I am talking about stakeholders, means the parents, the administration of the school, the learners. So if teacher is an, is an innovator, he or she definitely requires to develop some appropriate method to devise some appropriate methods to communicate to all the stakeholders. And an innovative teacher design activities as per needs and capacity of learners. You may have an idea. You want to translate it into a practice. But you need to think that the practice which you are trying to bring in your school, in your class, is as per need and capacity of your learners or not. You may have an idea which may work well for the higher classes, but your students are primary school students or elementary school students, so that idea may not work. You have an idea, but to implement that idea, you require certain infrastructure and that infrastructure you don't have. So it means that when you innovate, when you implement any idea innovatively in your class, in your school, you need to think about various aspects. And most important thing is that every innovation cares about the concerns of the community and society. So whatever you are going to use in your class as an innovative practice, you first think that is it in tune with the values, principles, ideas, and it is addressing the concerns of the community or not. So what innovation should be? First condition is that innovation should be new to the system or environment. It should be better than what is already in existence. You know, if an innovation is not better or it is just a repetition which is already in existence or somewhere, then it is not innovation. So sometimes an innovation may have taken place somewhere else. But in your system, in your environment, if you are introducing it for first time, 
then for your system, for your environment, it is an innovation. For others, it may not be. And innovation is always a deliberate and planned effort. Means, when we innovate, when we think that we need to innovate, we plan properly, we work continuously, we think about each and every aspect. So, innovation should be a deliberate and planned effort. And again, it should be contextualized as per the requirements of the local system and conditions. So, contextual to the local system and conditions is again a precondition for any innovation. Because if an innovation is not supporting and helping your learners in your class, for example, you saw an innovation on internet which is being practiced in our own school, which is English medium school and they are using some language lab and all those things to improve the pronunciation skills of the learners. Now, if you want to use it in your classroom at a ruler school of Uttar Pradesh or at a ruler school of Telangana or at a ruler school of Andhra Pradesh, can you replicate the same? You cannot. Can you use the same software? You cannot. Because the language of your learners is different from the language which is being practiced in that innovation. So, you need to contextualize that innovation according to the local needs, only then it will be a successful innovation in your classroom. Next, innovation should be very instrumental for bringing the change in behavior. So, if innovation is not bringing any positive change in the behavior of your learners, it is not a successful innovation. And innovation should facilitate to you, it should be conducive for making unfamiliar to familiar. Because many things which you are trying to bring in your classroom may be unfamiliar to your learners. But if it is conducive to make it a learner friendly and familiar to the learners, then this innovation will get succeeded. And believe me teachers that if you are trying to innovate, the first thing is required in your mind and in your spirit is the positivity. You should be positive in your nature. You think positive even if you are facing challenges. Many times innovation bring certain challenges with them because they are new. For example, technological innovations. If you brought any technological innovation in your teaching learning, if you brought any technological innovation in your classroom, you may face certain challenges. Challenges not only in terms of technology, not only in terms of handling the technology, but the attitudinal challenges also. There may be peers who may discourage you. There may be sometimes some people in your school management which may not be uh, well versed with the technology and they may not encourage you. But don't hesitate, don't stop. Keep on working, keep on pondering on the positive aspects of the technology, positive aspects of your innovation. And when you will display it and it will affect positively to your learners, everyone will accept its importance in teaching learning. So what innovation is? Every innovation which is good, which is something which improves the system should be adopted and practiced in the classroom. Let us move towards types of the innovation. You know, there are basically four types of innovations in the industry as well as in education. One is called product innovation. Another is called process innovation. Third one is called paradigm innovation. And fourth one is called positioning innovation. Let us talk in brief about all these innovations one by one. What is a product innovation? Product innovation means developing a new product or replacing the old model by the new. Let me take the example. For example, in science and mathematics classroom, to replace the traditional teaching learning, NCRT has developed certain kits, science kits and mathematical kits, certain educational toys. So those educational toys were new products and those kits were the models which were replacing the old teaching systems with the new one. So these are called product innovations. Means 
any school teacher if he or she is producing any educational material which is new to the system and which is a product which brings positive changes in the classroom teaching learning such innovation is considered as product innovation next is process innovation process means the delivery mechanism means if someone is developing and implementing new and improved delivery mechanism or methods or he or she is bringing some significant changes in the existing techniques equipments or softwares then it is called process innovations let me take again example from teaching learning when behaviorism came micro teaching was introduced to train the teachers you all know that in micro teaching we talk about different teaching skills one by one like blackboard skill writing skill questioning skill uh, stimulus variation skill then combining different skills into one so introduction skill many many skills are there which are required in a classroom so these were taught as micro teaching skills in teacher training programs so that was a process innovation because it brought certain changes in the process of teaching learning similarly the models of teaching they were also process innovation then you recall the uh, era where we talk about machine learning we talk about program instruction and we developed many pi package and computer assisted instruction package cii packages for introducing and integrating them in our teaching learning so those were again the examples of process innovation nowadays we are using web 2.0 and we are talking about web 3.0 tools to introduce in classroom teaching learning we are talking about integrating artificial intelligence in classroom teaching learning so we are uh, trying to integrate the icts which are already available in our face to face teaching learning and making it as a blended mode similarly we do some experiments in odl system also and we are trying to converge the technology and the traditional odl at one place so all these comes under process innovations paradigm innovation when something drastically change when there is a major shift in thinking and working for example when national curriculum framework 2005 was implemented in this country suddenly the whole teaching learning has shifted from behaviorist perspective to constructivist perspective there were changes in the textbooks there were changes in the examination system there were changes in the teaching learning there were changes in the methodology there were changes in the lesson planning so whether it is assessment teaching learning methodology principles lesson planning everything had changed suddenly so such sudden shifts from one perspective to another perspectives are called paradigm innovation you all know that uh, after see after this national curriculum framework 2005 we all have faced many new challenges and many new innovations we have seen we have seen the introduction of continuous competency evaluation in school education we have seen a lot of discussion about open book education we have seen one experiment of making class 10th board optional few years back we have seen a innovation in choice based credit system in higher education we are now seeing the innovations in terms of online examination all these are the example of paradigm shift some innovations are called positioning innovations so positioning innovations means a tool or a method has been designed for something else and being used and we started using it for something else let me take the example of facebook have we two years back or one year back thought to do continuous sessions on facebook live for our learners no we were using facebook just to sharing our views with our peers or our friends we were posting pictures images videos we are just trying to keep connected with our, our friends and colleagues and relatives only that much huge were there but suddenly a situation came we were not connected with our learners we thought how we can connect every day and we brought this positioning innovation we positioned facebook as a teaching learning tool similarly many conferencing tools which are now being used for 
teaching learning process were not actually originally planned for teaching learning. They were planned for something else. They were planned for factory meeting, for industry meeting, but we started using them. There is another example of blockchain. Blockchain technology was based, was basically introduced to support the uh, bitcoins, a cryptocurrency, but we started using it in education. So, we positioned blockchain from cryptocurrency to education. All such innovations are called positioning innovations. Actually, there are four dimensions of innovation. The first one is the extent of the newness. How new a innovation, how new an innovation is? Are we fundamentally redesigned anything? Or we are bringing incremental improvement? Sometimes we brought comparatively completely new thing into the system which was not there. Like we brought suddenly this uh, live sessions on Facebook or on social media or on different platforms, YouTube and all that. So these are not gradual changes, they come suddenly fundamentally. But if you see the use of educational technology or use of television for teaching learning, you can recall the 1970s site project, which was one of the foremost experiment uh, in using television for education in India. From that we moved to Eduset, we brought Gyan Darshan, we brought Swam Prabha channels. So all these innovations come gradually, it was incremental improvement. So one dimension is extent of newness. Then the second thing is, has the new ever been done before? Whatever you are proposing as an innovation, whether it is completely innovative or it is replication, both comes under innovation. So if something has been practiced somewhere and we are trying to practice now in our classroom, in our schools, then it is replication. Sometimes if a school or a system is new, then either that a school or system or educational institute creates something new. You create your own e-content, you create your own e-platform, you create your own, uh, you know, softwares and you try to integrate it with your classroom teaching learning or you adapt which is already available. So innovations can be creating something new, innovations can be adopting something new. Then who initiated the newness? You know, there are two types of people who initiate innovations in a particular field. Sometimes the people who are working in a particular system think innovatively to brought certain to bring certain changes in their system and they uh, bring some changes. But sometimes there are some people who are not in the system, who are outside the system in the support role, but they suggest to you that this change is very good and you should practice it. So every time it is not if some changes are coming in education, every change is being done by a teacher or a principal or institution, no. Sometimes the people who are not teachers, who are not uh, uh, students, who are not associated with any school system can bring certain changes in the system. At last, let us focus about the process of innovation, which starts from identifying the problem and which ends up to the adoption and modification of the approach. Let us discuss all these steps in brief one by one. The first step is identifying the problem. When we think about innovate, first we think why do we need innovation? The problem which we are facing, is it new or unique? Then we try to find out the solution that is there no solution available for this problem? Or if solutions are available, they are not able to solve the problem, to resolve the problem. So if this is the situation that we are facing a problem which is very new, there is no solution or the solutions available are not able to solve the problem, we think about certain innovative ways. Then what we do? We try to find out the reasons that why this problem has arisen. What could be the possible strategies to deal with the problem? Is there any one approach with which we can deal with the problem? Then we come to the third step, which is called trying out or experimenting. We identify the strategies, then we think that are we going to prioritize our strategies? Should I try out the same strategy on the whole class or should I divide the whole class into 
some small groups and I should experiment with one strategy with one group in different small groups. This we need to decide. Then when we do any experiment, we evaluate it that what are the outcomes of my experiment? Was it able to resolve my problem? Is it safe for my all students? Is it solving the whole problem or my solution is only for a part of the problem? We all need to discuss all these questions when we evaluate our experiment. Then we collect the feedback and we assess the achievement and limitations of our experiment that it is applicable to all. Are my students comfortable with this innovation or with this solution? Is it cost effective? What are the possibilities to use it at a larger scale at a school level or at a district level or what are the limitations? We also need to think. Thank you very much. Thank you.